Hey guys, well, I'm going to give you another Beth Avenue story. I think you're going to enjoy this one. Back in the 90s, we were robbing a lot of drug dealers. If you were selling drugs, you couldn't get by without paying a wise guy or a street guy. So what we used to do, we used to beat kids with drug deals and when they would show up, we would take their beeper and their drugs. And if they had somebody they were paying, they'd have to come and talk to us to get it back. If not, then they were with us and they would have to give us a weekly allowance. When I say weekly allowance, I'm meaning it would be $500 a week. It could be 1000 a week. It could be 5000 a week. It depends how much their beeper made. So Paulie G was up on the rising at this time. He was making a name for himself. He shot a couple people, killed a couple people. He was on record with the Bananos. He was known, he was stabbing people. Paulie G was a legitimate tough kid. He was a tough guy. Now, when I say that, I don't say it because I loved him and the way he went out, it breaks my heart. I say it because it's the truth. He really was a tough guy on Bath Avenue. He, he was one of the toughest kids on Bath Avenue at that time. And anybody who sold drugs had to pay a wise guy or a street guy. Georgie Conti had guys paying him. Albert Slavin, for example was with Georgie Conti. He was married to Georgie Conti. Whatever Albert Slavin made, he had to give Georgie Conti a piece of his action, whatever it was. Uh, we had this kid, Anthony, I don't remember his last name, Guido or something, and little Joey. Uh, then we had some kids from Avenue U that we shook down and robbed and they were paying us too. At the end of the week, we were getting maybe $10,000 in drug money. Paul E.G., Tommy Reynolds, Fabrizio, and Joe Benanti. We were splitting it. Calco was not there at the time for that. He was somewhere maybe in Italy or somewhere in the street. He wasn't around for that. He came later on, but Paulie G, what we used to do is, me, Tommy Reynolds, and Fabrizio, we would go out, we would meet these drug dealers, shake them down, pistol whip them, and take their beepers and their drugs. There was one incident where we took this kid's beeper. He was from Avenue X, and he's beeping us from the corner of Bay 23rd and Bad our hangout, our corner. And the beep is coming through and we're saying, who the fuck is this? The Tiamo store right here. So we walk in the store and it's Frankie Bones, Frankie Sharp. Now Frankie Sharp was a captain in the Casey crime family. He also had kids that was paying him. This is what was going on in the late eighties and nineties. If you sold drugs, you had to pay somebody. You can't just sell drugs and get away with it. If you did, you would probably get killed or get hurt. So we robbed one of his drug dealers and he was beeping the beeper from the payphone on Bay 23rd in the Tiamo candy store. We walked in and we said, you know, who's beeping us? And Frankie Sharp was there. He said, you have that beeper? I said, yeah. So Paulie G was with me, and we explained to him, Frankie, we didn't know that this kid was with you. He said, okay. He said, okay, you took a shot, I understand. So he let that pass, and that went on. As time went by, we also got a hit from Anthony Sparrow and Joe Benanti. There was this kid, Vincent Bickelman, who was a neighborhood burglary guy. 
He used to burglarize homes and steal stores, rob cars. He probably wasn't a bad kid. You know, it's just what happened was he actually burglarized the wrong house that day. Now, we get the scoop that he is from the neighborhood and he robbed Anthony Sparrow's daughter's house, Jill Sparrow. So after he robbed her house, what he did was he went to 86th Street and 20th Avenue, there was a jewelry store there and he sold it to the jeweler. Now the jeweler recognized the piece of gold. He looked at the kid and he said, okay. And he bought it from him. After he bought it from him, he got the kid's name. Now this guy, the jeweler, was also a knock around guy that would sometimes pass by Sparrow Social Club and play pinochle with the older men. So this guy walks in the club and he tells Anthony, Anthony, do you recognize this piece of jewelry? And Anthony says, wow, he says, holy shit. He says, that's my daughter's chain. It's a Jill on the chain, Jill. So the guy ends up giving Anthony Sparrow the name of the kid who sold him the piece of jewelry. He was a not so clean looking kid. I mean, in all honesty, he didn't deserve to die. That's for sure. And, uh, but Sparrow wanted him dead. Sparrow wanted to make an example out of this kid, Bickleman. So we get the hit from Joe Benanti and Sparrow that if you see this kid, kill him on sight. Now, I just want to stop for a moment to let you understand the murders Anthony Sparrow was involved in. You know, he gave the order to kill Paulie Galino eventually. He gave the order to kill Joe Pizza, which Tommy Karate did that hit. He gave the order to kill Louis Tuzio, which Dirty Danny and little Robbie Lino did that hit. So, you know, this is a guy that is very powerful and quiet, but once he gives an order, he gives an order and says, if you live or if you die. Now he could have given an order and said, you know what, break the kid's legs, break his arms, don't kill him. But he wanted this kid dead. So he gives the order to us. Paulie G was very aggressive. He wants to carry out the order and show Anthony Sparrow that he's capable. And Paulie G wanted to be straightened out. You know, he had it coming. He had everything that that life was fit for. He was tough. He committed a murder. He was a handsome kid. He was making money on the street. Everything that that life was supposed to be, he had it. And eventually, Joey Calco wanted it from him. But we're gonna get to, we're gonna get back to this. Now, we're looking around for this kid, Vincent Bickelman. We don't find him. We're looking around for him for maybe two weeks. We don't find him. This night, we're at the Gregory in the bar on Bay 22nd and Bath. Now, I was born on Bay 22nd and Bath. It's on my birth certificate. Gregory's Inn was a neighborhood bar where everyone would come socialize at nighttime. They had a little joker poker machine in there. They had a bartender named Bubbles. They called her Bubbles because she had big tits. And she was very known throughout the neighborhood for so many years. She was an older woman and she always told me, Jimmy, be careful whose car you get into. And she always gave me wise words all the time. So this night 
were all at Greg's end. And Paulie G ends up taking a ride with Albert Slavin and the kid Joey Milano's in the car. Paulie G had to do some business with him because Albert Slavin was a big Coke dealer and Paulie G was getting some Coke from him. Albert Slavin had a big connection and Paulie G was doing some business. So they go take a ride and they go do what they had to do. They probably lit up a joint as they took the ride. Uh, Albert drives him to his house. He drops off whatever he gave Paulie G. He comes back down towards 19th Avenue where Paulie G lives. As he's at the light, he sees Vincent Bickleman walking down the block. What he does is he tells Albert, Albert, pull over. He pulls over. As he pulls over, he runs up to B Vincent Bickleman and he shoots Vincent Bickleman five times. Three in the back, two in the head. Kills Vincent Bickleman right there, right off the corner of the 62 precinct. After he kills him, he gets rid of the gun. He comes back to Greg's Inn and he tells me what happened. When he tells me what happened, he takes a walk with me outside and he says, Jimmy, he says, I just took care of that kid Vince Bickleman. He's right off the corner. I said, you serious? Holy shit. He said, what I'm doing is, he says, Albert Slavin and Joey Milano was in the car. Albert wasn't supposed to be in the car. He says, I'm telling Sparrow and Joe Benanti that you were there with me. This way you can get the credit too. And I go along with it. I said, okay. I said, if that's what you want to do, no problem. You know what I mean? I was a young kid. I'll get the credit because eventually, you know what? I wanted to move up the ladder too. Paulie had a plan. Once he was going to get straightened out, eventually we would all move up the ladder. You know? So the next day comes, we go to Sparrow's club. We go see Sparrow and Joe Benanti. We told them that kid is taken care of, done. Sparrow taps him on the back, gives him a kiss. He says, good job, good for you. He tells him, Jimmy was there with me, so I want him to you know, get a little credit too. And I go, Anthony, saying, nice seeing you, stuff like that. And you know, he pats me on the, on the shoulder, stuff like that. And uh, we just take off. So that is how easy it is to live or die in my neighborhood at that time. Now, Anthony Sparrow, he could have made that kid live. All he had to say was break his legs, break his arms, but he wanted him dead. And Paulie G wanted to get straightened out and prove himself that he was capable and he wanted that button. But that's what that neighborhood does to you. It makes you wanna get made and become straightened out and become a part of the mob. Me personally, I was very much here, there. Paulie G, we drove around. We used to smoke some pot, hang out in the corner, have some fun at nighttime at his house, watch some old movies give a couple beatings out, but Paulie G was all about that life. That's what he wanted, and that's what he wanted to be. He wanted to be a wise guy, 100%, and he had every part of it to become one. So I hope you like that story. That's a Jimmy Calandra, a bad damn you story for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And to the next story, have a good night. I love you guys, and I love the support. Thank you so much. Bye.